I, uh, I want to talk about uh, some uh, uh, weird psychic stuff and uh, some practices in Sufism and uh, <laughs> a lot of them are uh, too strange uh, that to uh, talk about in other lectures and uh, think even the very best psychics they kind of just brush over some of this stuff uh, they mention because they uh, instinctively know that a lot of people are just gonna miss it. They, it's just gonna go over their head. Uh, I was looking at the Google images. Uh, I, I had this psychic. I, I, I know knew her name and I kept thinking about her uh, because she talked about some of this stuff. And finally, I found her. Her name is uh, Sylvia Brown and. Uh, yeah, I was looking at her images, and she she was very pretty too, a real nice blonde. But I guess uh, at the end of her life, she had gained weight. I, I think there must have been some kind of disease or something, because she she looked uh, like she, her face was all puffed up, like she had thyroid. Anyhow, she talks about in her book about uh, this uh, concept. I, I know there is a special name for it too. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's called place energy. That's the only words that I remember about it. But uh, also the French uh, uh, have other names. Well, the word déjà vu is uh, kind of close, uh, but that doesn't relate to uh, to place energy. Anyhow. There is this practice. Oh, I, I know there is uh, this uh, that relates to objects, but uh, then there is place energy too. But there is a name for that. This is different than uh, energies that are in the object. Anyhow, uh, the, there there is a there is a practice. Uh, and it also relates to touching the hand or touching the body because uh, I, I, I think that the, the consciousness in the universe is the only thing that matters. Everything else is like uh, decoration or uh, you know uh, flowers by the side of the garden. They are, they are not, they're not important. Uh, the, what, what the consciousness is is just something totally different than material world and it, it's really what has created the universe and then uh, but when a lot of scientists they study the world the first thing they come uh, across which is the material world and they latch onto that and try to kind of figure out the world but that's BS uh, the material world it, it behaves in a very mechanistic manner, and uh, it's, it's not really the world. The, the world is just consciousness, and what happens in the consciousness is the only thing that's important. So uh, this uh, there is this practice in the uh, Islamic Sufism. It's called. Uh, uh, living in the presence, like hall. Hall means that when you are living right now, you're not in your memories, or you're not planning for the future, or, you know, you're not doing anything, but you're just focused on your own self and in experiencing the moment, then that's when the consciousness comes to life. That's, you're just you, there's no, nothing else. But, but, but just you is, is consciousness. So there is a saying by Prophet Muhammad that says, "You be you. Just just be yourself. Just be be this person, because you are consciousness. And everything else is like a window dressing. Is a is a history. Is a, a mechanical interaction of things. The, is like a." money or think credit that's gonna be or a future plan or, but none of it, it really matters because this is what really matters and then the Sufi master has a poem uh, says uh, 
جمع کن آن چه توان از تو را collect yourself together become this you که همین معنی جان است را because this is the, really the meaning of John is the spirit so as a psychic this is the only trail I'm following I'm not following a scientific track or you know how the universe was created from the big bang or, or those stuff are important as a mathematical tool and if you look at the human history you see that most of the religions and most of the spiritual path they, they really do not focus on, uh, on the material world and they usually kind of uh, play with it a little bit and then move on into this and but then after renaissance and uh, the european scientists they mostly focus in the material world. Um, it has some value, yeah. Anyhow, uh, what uh, brings out the consciousness is like uh, this thing, living in the present, living and, and just being yourself. And forget about all the window dressing and what, forget about family, uh, and forget about the relationships and uh, interactions. As if you just come back to this, this is the real thing. And then, uh, oh, but uh, uh, for other people, the consciousness comes into uh, focus, becomes uh, they experience it in different way. Uh, for example, in the Zarathustra religion, it says that like when a man and a woman uh, fall in love uh, there is a romance that there is some light that goes from the man to the to the woman or vice versa it's like they their consciousness kind of merges and becomes one that's how people become conscious like uh, like when I look at different periods of my life the, the part that I remember and I latch on to this energy is there, this strong sentiment is this part. Like when I went out with this chick, or when we looked at each other and we fell for each other. Or uh, this is one way the consciousness comes uh, apart. And all kinds of phenomena, weird stuff happen. And usually uh, the things happen that you never expected that. That's why um, it's, it's almost impossible to plan a love, uh, uh, like fall, to fall in love. You, can, you can't do that. It has to arise spontaneously. Uh, and usually when it does, all the plans fall apart. Uh, you know, there's a, like a million movies when the, a girl is plans to get married to this guy and in the last minute everything falls apart there's another guy comes in and <laughs> this is one way consciousness suddenly people become conscious oh this is not me uh, are we going to do these things not differently then the other way the consciousness comes into focus and becomes uh, uh, a thing that's acting and changing things is a war when people are killing each other uh, and uh, uh, so some places uh, like what Sylvia Brown was talking about uh, some places where wars have happened and, and a lot of people got together and they killed each other uh, um, there is very strong energies in the everything uh, in the stones in the, in the road when uh, like a psychic comes, uh, walks on there, it's like the whole place comes to life. And there is nothing there now, but uh, that's not the feeling you get. When you, when, uh, there are some places that are walking, and uh, I'm going to tell you some experiences uh, that the, the, just the place is just bursting with energy, uh, and you just 
you cannot experience it. I, I know other people who are not psychic also experience it and they they call uh, the place has like an aura or uh, there is, a, there is a, a lot going on there even though you don't really see it. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's like a fire, you know, uh, when, uh, when there is a lot of these energies, like, it's like as if somebody uh, used the place as a crucible and then when, somebody, when the fire is gone, you come and look at the place, the whole place seems to be, have been charred, all kinds of remains of uh, fire and the place, some part is very bright, some part is very dark. And, uh, I, I mean, for me it's really impossible not to see that. Uh, uh, Anyhow, uh, when I was, uh, uh, when this was 1978, when I went back to Iran, this was uh, after the Shah had fallen, and uh, <coughs> I was uh, uh, I was hanging out there in the summer, and so my dad and, and my brother, he, they didn't want me to stay because things were, uh, uh, there, there, were, there was going to be a lot of trouble, and in fact, war with Iraq started. And inside Iran, there was a lot of uh, struggle for power control. And uh, uh, anyhow, uh, so I was just kicking back for one summer, and I knew I, I will not be back for a long time. Then I went around. I went to some museums. I was uh, I was looking at. Uh, different artifacts and uh, I noticed like uh, a lot of the really ancient uh, artifacts like statues they find they, they find these uh, like uh, uh, very grotesque looking women very obese but has huge tits and huge butts and uh, I guess uh, in the ancient times uh, food was really important and then uh, a woman that was uh, sexually very uh, valuable and she would receive a lot of food and she also uh, her body parts would grow I guess this was something to be desired in those cultures so when you look at the look at these statues uh, all these obese women all these very grotesque uh, figures and then uh, also, there is a lot of uh, signs of extreme violence, uh, and this kind of comes uh, into uh, focus when you uh, uh, look at some of these artifacts and stuff. Y you, the energy is just, just, just bursts out, and you, you just see it. Like I went to, uh, uh, the, uh, like in the Iranian museum. Museum Iran and Boston is uh, everything is divided into periods. Like uh, uh, there is the uh, Alexander's invasion, the, the the Greek period of Iran. So, for example, when I went to look at the Alexander's uh, uh, period where Iran was occupied by Alexander, it was like uh, very few stuff, and then. Uh, the feeling was like when you look down, there was just some, uh, uh, some like uh, tombstones that had Greek writings on them. Uh, the very, uh, very uh, minimal kind of uh, presentation. Uh, it just showed the feeling that the Persians had. They wanted to demolish the Greeks uh, for having came in. Uh, so almost all the artifacts were were destroyed, or you just could see some tombstones here and there. It was very like a show a feeling, uh, like I just wanna completely wipe you out. I wanna demolish you. Wanna take everything, uh, anything that l resembles you. And uh, that, uh, so when you moved back again or moved forward in historical periods. It shows this pre-Islamic and then Islamic period, and then they come all the way to uh, uh, Mongolian invasions, 
there were some rooms that were all just uh, um, Mongolian stuff and it showed like uh, uh, some, ha uh, some uh, I guess they, they used uh, uh, parchments or uh, uh, was it like uh, uh, skin of animals, uh, leather skin? You know, it showed the writings of the Mongolian leaders. Some of the stuff was, uh, and then um, uh, I want to tell you one experience with this period. Uh, there were these, uh, uh, these chairs. I guess chairs, or uh, where the king sat. Uh, they call it tacht. Uh, had, had a lot of significance. It wasn't like the Western civilization, where the a uh, crown ha had a lot of significance. He showed the the royalty, but the chair that the, he he sat that was the you know significance of the. So the in the Mongolian era, the chairs were very simple. It was like a, just a uh, long. Uh, uh, I think that was uh, how it looked. Long uh, uh, piece of wood, very uh, thick and then uh, with some uh, stubs that came in. So there were like two, three uh, of these over there. Uh, they did not look anything majestic, anything significant. So, uh, I, I would have uh, sold them to the, in the yard sale for a dollar each. But uh, uh, when I came into this chair, like I, I was looking at these uh, stubs that looked like chair, there was massive uh, feeling of uh, violence. It was like unbelievable, uh, and uh, it, it looked like uh, a lot of blood had been shed around this chair. It was, uh, it was uh, you, c you could I couldn't miss the feeling. Then uh, uh, it, it showed that the like uh, like uh, I was in a court and there was this king that was very forceful uh, collecting monies and taxes. So what they did, uh, what I saw was that there, uh, there was a courtier and he was like out there hanging out and doing stuff and uh, uh, they grabbed him. I guess he hadn't paid the taxes or stuff and they brought him here near this chair. And then another courtier came in uh, with a a long uh, uh, thing, long, it was like a uh, metal uh, thing, pointed metal thing, and he stabbed him in the neck, all kinds of blood was spilling out, and killed him like around this chair. It just, uh, uh, the, this, this, this artifact had uh, so much blood and energies around it, you, you could not miss, uh, I guess that's why they had kept even though it did have, had no uh, artistic uh, uh, thing to it, there was no nothing uh, that you would think that this this stupid thing is valuable. But uh, I guess the person who was arranging for this historical period also thought, hey, hey, this thing is loaded with energies. Uh, so I know that uh, there is uh, energies that goes into uh, like rings or uh, <coughs> uh, stuff that somebody might wear where a lot of consciousness uh, has come into form like uh, if somebody is a mass murderer or serial murderer uh, the stuff around him the, the what he wears the stuff from the victim is all loaded with all kinds of uh, Stuff, uh, uh, even a uh, mediocre psychic, is, uh, there is a lot going on in this place. Uh, he kind of, uh, like me, can kind of piece together uh, things that went on there. Then uh, also, uh, the a whole place, like Gettysburg, like where a lot of soldiers came in and killed each other, it can become like that. It can become like the chair. It's full of energies and, and even ghosts hanging around there. And 
then uh, on top of all of this the the if you uh, it's like and uh, you like if I touch somebody their body uh, or uh, I usually try not to not for it to be sexual it's just simply touching somebody's hand or uh, then there is all these uh, things about them that comes in uh, all kinds of stuff that they are, however they are like uh, uh, their uh, you know their their character, their uh, uh, the way they they, they act, or uh, what uh, usually uh, what I see is something that uh, is a vice that they have. It's something that they do. They kind of very politely kind of cover it up, and uh, they don't want uh, it to be advertised very much. Some, for example, if somebody is very attached to. Uh, making money uh, that kind of shows up or the, if they are gay or uh, they are demented or people who are crazy or, or they're, they're judges or uh, they are, for example the cop the energy right away comes out uh, yeah anything that like either this person or people around him become conscious suddenly like they're at the presence and he did something to them or they did something to him boom it, it, it impacts all the stuff the body the 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 artifacts the stuff that the, and uh, then uh, there another concept or idea is like this uh, like uh, when the uh, person dies their consciousness some people not everybody like the, it, it has a chance to uh, go on its own journey like uh, it, it doesn't need this place anymore but a lot of uh, a lot of ghosts they realize that and they move on they, you know, they f kind of fade away after a while there's no not so much interaction with the living but other uh, ghosts they are so attached to the material world or to some person or somebody and they kind of tag along with him uh, and like I have ghosts that are tagging along like my dad they tag along and uh, uh, experience the world again and like uh, as if they're saying what if I was this person I wasn't really me I wasn't uh, like Genghis Khan, I was like this person and what if I did things different, how would I feel and they, they come in and they kind of want to experience life again as if they had done something different and how much of what I did was similar to this good person uh, hey I'm uh, validated, I, I did something like him Okay, so this is also what happens. I think is the basis for deja vu. Uh, anyhow, uh, I've had a lot of experiences uh, with uh, uh, with politicians and uh, people like that. Uh, I, I think this Kennedy he, he, and Jacqueline they come through. Uh, they, this, I just see the though, that. And then uh, Hitler comes. I have uh, visions of him. I had a, a vision of him. It was like uh, it was like uh, I, 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 I was walking into this plane. It was seem, seemed to be like a fast, uh, um, fast uh, attack plane. It was extremely fast and also very small. Uh, very uh, agile uh, kind of uh, play. Was, uh, the, I, I, the feeling was that there is nothing in the fucking world that's as fast and as deadly as this plane. It was like that. It was a fighter plane. And then I, I saw I sat, or Hitler sat in the in the back seat of this plane. It had some uh, very small uh, kind of uh, compartment to sit in. And this plane it just took off 
it was so fast and the way it took off it was like almost like 30 degree angle it was like fucking going uh, and, and when it went out uh, when you looked out uh, the feeling of, of this person was like this fucking place belongs to me it, it was nothing but steel and uh, uh, stone all kinds of uh, stone buildings and steel just a massive feeling of uh, power projected into this it, it, it was a I think it was a vision of I think it was a very authentic vision anyhow um, with the the vision of Kennedy I had it was like a, whenever this president wants to come around and chit chat with you has business with you the first thing that you're gonna see is gonna this his bitch comes around like Jacqueline and uh, you know whenever this uh, chick comes that uh, after he, her it's going to be him and uh, uh, and the other thing i saw is that no matter who she or him sleep uh, with uh, these two are together they are they are, they are like one entity uh, anyhow he comes around whenever he comes around is all these concerns about the United States, I guess he, I guess he knew uh, the United States is gonna fall apart because of militarism and attacking all these other countries. The feeling is like uh, uh, of concern, like you know, I, I know this is gonna become a pile of shit, but hey, uh, I, uh, is there something we can do? Like, uh, can we make a warning? Can we do this? And, <laughs> I don't think warnings works when you got the uh, whole society dedicated to this stupid shit. But uh, but the, the f whenever if you have a psychic experience, whenever you see Jackie or there is energies of her coming in, you know the next one is gonna be this guy, this president. Now, this is some of the experiences I had and uh, I, I know I'm haunted by all the uh, dynasty kings and uh, you know I've had a lot of experiences in that uh, but uh, uh, it brings me to like the consciousness uh, is really important uh, it's really a spiritual path is to find that consciousness and become that and uh, kind of let go of all these other relationships. I guess the Sufi master was saying that uh, your nespat ha, nespat means like we have the relationship you have with money, uh, with uh, women, with, with political power, with this, with that. Those are like your nespat ha. You, you got to put them aside and then become this consciousness then you can experience the world experience the universe what it is what it's trying to do uh, uh, besides getting all confused with the stuff that's going on on the side <coughs> i think uh, some of my <laughs> lectures are very very weird and very few people actually gonna uh, get this but uh, hey uh, this is uh, always in my face and I'm gonna talk about it. And uh, this is my YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't like this kind of research, uh, hey, uh, go watch some Madonna uh, dance. Thanks.